In tonight's video, I'm gonna be taking a picture of one of my favorite deep sky nebulas from my backyard with my very own personal telescope. It's been a long time since I've been in this yard taking some pictures and I can't wait to get after it on this clear Friday night. It's been months since I've been in this backyard imaging. The last time I took a picture with my telescope was from Tanner's house in the last video, and that was the first time I took a picture in months. So I haven't been in this yard in forever, so it feels really, really nice to be back home. Although there's no snow on the ground now, we did get a ton of snow this year. It's just the only time there was snow on the ground, it was either cloudy or 30 degrees below zero. But the temperature tonight is gonna stay in the positives, so you know I'll be out imaging. And the target I'm going after tonight tends to be a crowd favorite. For those of you that have been in the Astro game for a while, I'm sure you know what this target is. It's called the Rosette Nebula, and it's located in the constellation Orion. This target is one of my favorites to go after in the winter because of its brightness and its size. It fits my camera and telescope's field of view perfectly, and it's bright enough where I can get enough data to complete a full image in one night. Keep in mind, this is from Bortle 9 City Skies too. I don't really know how clear it's going to stay out tonight. The forecast calls for some partly cloudy skies starting at around midnight, and the clouds have been moving really, really fast all day, so the forecast has been pretty unpredictable. But for the past six or so hours, it's been totally clear, and I don't see any clouds coming anytime soon so you know what that means we're getting set up as you can see uh, my setup is already ready to go in the back as soon as I got home from Tanner's I just set it up here just in case we'd have a clear night which we did so we are all ready to go as soon as it gets dark I can see the moon up there it's about halfway full so that shouldn't be a problem because by the time the Sun is fully set and it's totally dark the moon will be on its way out anyways but uh, it's been cloudy all year so far. January has been totally clouded out and basically all of February has been clouded out too except for that one night Tanner and I got together. But in the next week we're supposed to have almost three fully clear nights. So if that holds true I'm gonna be out here making videos as much as I can for you guys. I cannot wait. At least once a year I like to have one of those nights in the winter where you're just dedicated to the astro experience. You don't go inside for breaks you just try and stay outside and appreciate it as long as possible. Obviously I can't do that every night but if I get the chance tonight, I'm gonna do that. Obviously, I can't do that every night, but I'm really excited to just take in the environment tonight and enjoy the peace and complete quiet. If I had to pick one thing that I liked about Astro in the winter, it would be that. I've mentioned this a ton of times before by now, but if you don't know, I use an app called AnyDesk to wirelessly connect to my setup out here. I can use it from my phone and my indoor computer, and I connect it to a mini PC that's hooked up to my telescope. So the mini PC is actually on top of the setup controlling it, and I can just wirelessly see and control what's happening from other devices. There are some people that choose to just have an outside observatory and they run it completely indoors and that is totally great, but that's just not my style. I really like to be out here enjoying the environment and taking everything in about each season with astrophotography, but sometimes it just gets a little too cold and I still have to calibrate my PhD2 guiding, but my fingers are falling off. So it's nice to have when those moments happen. But in my eyes, being able to be out here and enjoy the night sky is a privilege that not everyone has access to, so I want to take advantage of it as much as I can and enjoy it. Some of you might have caught on to this already, but when I'm processing my astro pictures, I like to take a little bit of creative liberty in how I use the color. I use that because I want my image of the Rosette Nebula to catch your eye out of the hundreds of other ones you're going to see on Instagram that day. In 2021, I went crazy with the purple. In hindsight, it was too much, but I did it anyways and I learned some lessons with that. Uh, last year, I was a little bit more mellow. I had a little bit of the reds back involved into the picture and this year I want to go more with the red side so back to those natural colors but I still want to do something a little bit different I'm not sure yet but the important thing to note with this is the more data you have the more opportunities you have in the processing so I have to make sure I collect the best data I can now because that will unlock more creative opportunities once I get back inside and start processing tomorrow there's always been something about the winter from astrophotography that gets my heart racing a little bit. Part of what I love about this hobby is that it gets you outside when no one else is. You go to those empty fields and rent those Airbnbs and you stay out until three in the morning when not a single soul is up. But you know what you're doing is special though. And I think that's why I love winter astrophotography so much. Sure, the targets are cool and the cold might improve your camera quality a little bit, but the biggest thing to me is that the environment you're shooting in is completely peaceful. After weeks of busy days, cloudy skies, and frigid temperatures, I've been waiting for so long to say a sentence like this. Let's get set up to photograph the Rosette Nebula.
All right, so it is officially pretty dark outside. I am all set up now, and this is what I'm talking about when I say I love the environment of winter astrophotography. I haven't been out at this time of night in forever. This is my favorite time of night when sunset is over, but it's not totally dark yet. Still got the glow of sunset over there, but it's starting to get dark out over here. And over here is the constellation Orion. For those of you that are new to astrophotography, this constellation houses the brightest nebula in the night sky, at least from the northern hemisphere, and it's right in there. It is the Orion Nebula, go figure. That one is also a crowd pleaser, along with the Horsehead Nebula and the Rosette Nebula, which is right over on this side. So all the goodies are in there, including what we're going after tonight. But yeah, there is just nothing better than being out here at this time. Moon's up there, setup is down here. Clouds over there apparently. Oh man, there is nothing better than this. So let's go over where my setup is really fast. So as you can see from my setup's angle, Orion is rising from the trees right there. It's gonna go across the sky there. So it's going to go through this gap here. The Rosette Nebula is going to rise right in that pocket and go across like that. So in total we'll be able to get a bunch more hours on this sucker tonight. Man, am I excited. So I'm not even polar aligned yet and already I can tell it is going to be one of those nights. I think any fellow astrophotographers watching this video know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not going to jinx it, but I'm going to jinx it. I have a feeling things are going to go well tonight. Last year in the winter time, I didn't even get to photograph Orion once because of the clouds. All of January and all of February was clouded out. So seeing Orion rising in my yard right now is taking me back a long time. It's been way too long since I've been out here in the winter and I'm so ready. My hands are freezing cold from touching all this metal now. So I'm gonna warm them up. And while I'm doing that, let's talk about what I'm using to shoot tonight's picture. Tanner is currently texting me. If you're new to this channel, I rarely ever switch out the camera or telescope that I'm using to take my pictures. Actually, I rarely switch anything on my setup at all. So if you've been watching the videos for a long time now, you know exactly what I'm going to say. The camera and telescope that I'm using to take this picture tonight is the ZWO ASI 533MC Pro, coupled with the Skywatcher ED72. The telescope has a focal length of 420 millimeters, and the camera sensor's size is perfect for fitting the Rosette Nebula in there. It fills the whole frame, but leaves just enough space for you to be able to breathe. For those of you that are curious, if I ever don't mention the setup that I'm using for an image, it's always linked in the description of that video. So not only is every piece of gear listed down there, but links are also available for you to purchase these on your own. Another familiar phrase on this channel by now is that I already have data on this target. I know it's a shocker. But since I was using the same camera and telescope last year, I collected a bunch of data on the Rosette Nebula already. So my goal is not to start an image, but rather to add more data to an image that already exists, revealing even more detail. Like I said before, the more data you collect, the more freedom you give yourself later on in the processing stage. So the more data, the better. Always remember that. And with my trusty Optolong L Extreme filter, the data that I'll be getting tonight should be really, really good. I live in a Bortle 9 zone, so I'm right outside Chicago. So I need this filter to work as hard as it can tonight.
right, so it is now way later into the night. It is well past midnight out, and my telescope has been tracking and getting pictures of the Rosette Nebula this whole time. The sub-exposures look really good tonight, and I can't wait to show you guys the final image that I'm getting. For the very first fully clear night of this winter, I'm happy to say I think it was a success. I'm really happy that I was able to document and share this night with you guys, and it is definitely a night that I'm going to remember for a long time. If you're curious as to what I was talking about, I'm going to disconnect my lav mic right now, and I just want you to listen to the environment around me. There is not a single sound. nothing. The only thing I hear is my neighbor's heater going on right now and once that turns off it'll be dead silent out. So it feels so good to be back in the backyard taking pictures and sharing them with you guys. Again I hope you enjoy this image of the Rosette Nebula and I will see you in the next video. Clear skies. Oh,